Okay, this is going to be a short little tutorial about uh, citing sources. Um, I'm not an English teacher. I never pretend to be one. And so I'm not particular about where the semicolons go and if you follow it, any particular pattern. But you do have to figure out a way to show me and other people that be reading your material where you got the sources. Um, it's not enough to simply put at the end of your paper a list, a bibliography that says, here's some stuff. Um, when you cite material, when you quote somebody, when you borrow somebody else's ideas or their data, you have to cite it in the paper to show that you know where it came from and you're acknowledging what you gained from other people. And that's vitally important to not do this. It's called plagiarism and it will result in you getting uh, bad grades and could further uh, you could end up in pretty deep trouble with the Dean of Students so you want to make sure that you cite your sources there's all kinds of guides out there to how to do this and um, it's just a matter that you have to acknowledge where you got the material so I'm going to give you some examples here so you can sort of see what I'm looking for when it comes to citing material Okay, so here you have a little section from a little book that I wrote with some students about ethics. And at the beginning of that, I introduce um, some material about um, logic. And I want to explore this idea that somebody says, well, Michael Jordan is the greatest player that's ever played. And then I want to say, well, how do you know? What's the criteria? And somebody says, well, he scored the most points of any NBA player ever. Well, when we check the data, in fact, he has not scored the most points of any uh, player ever. But I want you to notice that since I didn't know that fact, I had to look it up. And then I had to cite that source to demonstrate where I got the material. So you see here I have the citation from the website where I got the data that I used to demonstrate that Michael Jordan has not scored the most points of any player. And then at the end of that paper, of course, I had to list the works that I cited. Sometimes this is called the bibliography or works cited page. And so I include all the materials that I cite in that whole paper. But it's really important that you understand that these are two different things. At the end of the paper, you list all the sources that you used. But when you use them in the document, you've got to cite them. And there are various ways to do this. Uh, you can do it as I've shown you there with uh, parentheses where you list the source that you use. I really love footnotes myself, but they're a little more complicated to do, so a lot of students avoid them. But when you cite somebody in the text where you cite them, you've got to put something, their last name, page number, the name of the book, um, so that you are showing the reader, or in my case, me, where you got that material and that it's something that you are giving credit to the person who did it. If it is not common knowledge, you have to provide citations. So that's the criteria. In other words, something that's common knowledge, you don't necessarily have to footnote uh, or make a citation. But if you use any fact or if you quote somebody directly, you've got to cite them and then put a footnote, a citation, and then it also has to appear in your bibliography. Here's another example. I wrote a chapter in a book about Shakespeare being a philosopher, and I'm making the argument that Shakespeare should be considered a philosopher. Now, I point out in my little chapter that um, many people don't want to include Shakespeare as a philosopher because he doesn't write like Kant and Hegel and Russell. But I then point out that many philosophers did write works of fiction like Shakespeare. And I mention uh, The New Atlantis, Candide, The Brother Karamazov, No Exit, and The Fall. Now, these are considered common knowledge. Now, maybe not to you, but I'm writing for scholars who uh, understand and write about philosophy and Shakespeare. And these would have been pieces of information that they would have known. And so I don't need to provide a footnote because I am making reference to material that I believe my uh, readers know about 
and that are out there in the public domain and people just know this and I'm not citing anybody in particular. However, later on in the same uh, chapter, I quote two individuals to help me continue to make the argument. And so uh, Terry uh, Eagleton writes about Shakespeare and he says this, it's difficult to read Shakespeare without feeling that he must certainly be familiar with the writings of Hegel, Marx, Nietzsche, Freud, Wittgenstein, and Derrida. Now, of course, um, Edelstein knows that that's not the case because Shakespeare was dead hundreds of years before any of them. But I am quoting Edelton. These are not my words. They, I use them to support my idea that Shakespeare should be considered a philosopher. But these are the words of Terry Edelton, they are in parentheses, and then you will see that I have um, cited them. In those, inside those parentheses, there is a reference to the, the book, the, or the year that it was published, and the page number. Later on, I then quote uh, Northrop Frye, and he says, If we had not had Hamlet, we might not have had the Romantic movement at all, or the works of Dostoevsky, Nietzsche, or Kierkegaard. So, uh, uh, Fry is pointing out that it's really the other direction, that because we have Shakespeare, we have the great writing, the great play Hamlet, that gave rise to the Romantic movement and other writers followed Shakespeare. But again, these are the words of Fry. They are in quotation marks. By the way, this was published in England, and they use the different quotation marks than we do. And then you'll notice that I have Fry, and then the year and the page number. So because this information is, I took it from Fry and Eagleton, which is appropriate as long as I give them credit so that nobody thinks that I am making this material up out of my head. Now, the rest of the chapter, much of it is my own thinking. But when I use other writers and other thinkers, I have to provide citations of where I got the material, and then it also then shows up in the bibliography. So there you are.